Bibles with you. Yes. Right? Please show your Bibles. Right? Uh, in every time we gather, uh, we put high regard and importance to the study of God's Word. So that's why every believer must have a copy of the Bible. Right? Uh, we, and we always encourage you that uh, although it's good to have technology today, uh, there are some advantages and disadvantages. Uh, we always encourage you to have your Bibles, uh, to have to have your physical Bibles, not your digital Bibles. Okay, uh, this is for emergency use. Sabi nga, wala ano inspired iPhone. Is an inspired iPhone? Pero inspired scriptures or inspired Bible, right? So you have your Bibles with you, right? You have your pens, okay? Ball pen, lapis, or whatever. You have your notes, notebooks. Taas na taas yung may mga notebooks. Uh, sinabi ko na last week, last time, di ba, dapat lahat meron, right? Because again, part of the learning uh, process is uh, yung pagsusulat ng sarila, yung retention of what we have heard uh, is higher when you write it down, when you see it, you hear it, when you write it down. And when you share it to others, when you speak it, ay mas mataas yung percentage of retention. So that's why uh, we need to be intentional in our uh, study uh, of God's Word. Okay, That's why we highly encourage you to have your faith diaries or your notes. Uh, take down notes every time uh, we uh, study the Word of God. Right? So, uh, let's go back to the theme which I introduced uh, for about a month ago. No? We had, we praise God for the privilege of having uh, Reverend Conrado and Pao and Reverend Ariela Badiana as our speakers for the month of May, even Brother Danny Bumia. Um So I had a uh, somewhat uh, one month uh, leave from the pulpit, uh, from the preaching responsibility. Uh, but I praise and thank God that uh, I have the privilege today to uh, preach to you uh, the Word of God. And uh, if you remember, I talked, uh, I introduced to you the theme entitled The Power of the Gospel. Since our focus this year is on extending the gospel testimony. So, kumbaga, tinitignan natin ng mas malalim kung ano ba talaga yung gospel na ating Panginoong Jesus. And I mentioned last time that as far as the gospel of God is concerned, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, it is a very uh, powerful gospel. The gospel of the Lord Jesus is a very powerful gospel. And God Himself displayed His exceeding great power by providing salvation to you and me and to everyone who will believe in the death burial, and the resurrection of God's one and only Son, and He is none other than Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. So therefore, if you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, you are a masterpiece of God's exceeding power. Right? That's why when you look at the person beside you, tignan nyo ha, okay? That person, if that person is, is a true believer in Christ, that person uh, is God's masterpiece. And God displayed His exceeding power in and through that person, through that believer. Tignan nyo katabi yung sabi, sabi mo nga, power ka. Right? That's why, again, our theme verse is Romans chapter 1, verse 16, where the Apostle Paul wrote, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greeks. Okay? So, God's great power is displayed in and through the gospel of, of Jesus Christ. It was displayed in the person of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, when God sent him into this world to die for our sins, he was buried and he was resurrected on the third day, as the scriptures say. And uh, we will look into the, these three elements of the gospel starting from today. But not only that, I mentioned last time that God also displays his great power today through the preaching.
preaching of the gospel. Because according to Romans chapter 10, verse 17, faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing by the word of God. So when the gospel is preached and a person hears it, God gives him faith and that person believes in the Lord Jesus Christ and receives him as his or her personal Lord and Savior, then God will what? Display or manifest His power unto salvation. According to Romans chapter 1 verse 16, for it is the power of God to what? To salvation. Okay? And He will do that uh, when the, a person, according to Romans 10, chapter 10 verse 13, uh, says that when he calls upon the name of the Lord, he will be saved. Right? And at that very moment, when a person is saved, maranasan niya yung kapangyarihan ng Panginoon. Doon niya maranasan yung great power of God unto salvation. And this is my, uh, my prayer uh, and my desire in, in our series of studies of the theme, the power of the gospel, that God would give us understanding so that that phrase, you power of God to salvation, will have a deeper and more meaningful impact in our Christian life so that it will result into, number one, a deeper appreciation of our salvation in Christ. Na mas appreciate natin yung kaligtasan na binigay sa ating Panginoon. Pangalawa, that we would have that determined advancement uh, or as far as our faith in Christ is concerned. Mas lalo tayo ano, magiging malakas na matatag sa ating pananampalatay sa Panginoon. And lastly, that we would deliberately announce or advance also the gospel of, of Christ. Okay? So, natanggap natin Narinig natin, natanggap natin, and na-experience natin yung power ng Panginoon. So therefore, as we have heard, let us also preach and share so that others will hear, and they too will believe and call upon the name of the Lord, and they will be saved and experience God's power unto salvation. So today we'll start to focus on the first element of the gospel, which is the death of Jesus Christ, and we'll try to see how God displayed His power to salvation in this particular element of the gospel. And this afternoon, I would like for us to consider the term atonement. Okay. Have you heard of that word? Atonement. Okay. The, see, the doctrine, someone said, the doctrine of atonement is very important. Uh, it's a very important teaching uh, in our Christian faith. And it's a very important uh, teaching that we also find in the scriptures of the Word of God. Charles Spurgeon once said, To deny the great doctrine of atonement by the blood of Jesus Christ is to hamstring the gospel and to cut the throat of Christianity. In other words, when you deny the doctrine of atonement, it's like you're killing Christianity. Because the very essence and foundation, or the very core of Christianity is, a part of that is Jesus Christ's substitutionary death, His atonement, okay, for your sins and my sins. Now, let's try to look into uh, a few things here. First of all, let's have, let's look into the definition of atonement. The definition of atonement. The word atonement is used only once actually in the New Testament. And you can find it in Romans chapter 5 verse 11. The King James translation used the word atonement in this particular verse. But in other translations, ang ginamit nila is the word reconciliation. Okay? So, but if you go to the Old Testament, it's you would often see and find... Uh, uh, the word atonement being used. Uh, we've been studying sa prayer meeting natin yung feasts of uh, Israel, right? And one of that is the day of atonement. So that word is used, no? But in the New Testament, although uh, you can find it just once uh, in the King James Version translation, uh, but the essence and the idea of 
of it is so much expressed in in the in the New Testament. Okay, and uh, we would look into that even uh, in our series uh, on the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, but the dictionary defines the word atonement as the action of making amends for a wrong or injury. So, making amends, keywords, of, for a wrong or injury. Now, when it's used in, uh, in Christianity, this means that this is the act of God in reconciling mankind unto himself through uh, Jesus Christ. That's why when we look at the word atonement, uh, um, you can see the word at one meant. Okay, one meant. Me meaning being what? Um, being reconciled. Okay, that's one word. That day alone. Uh, there was wrong, there was injury, there was separation. But because of atonement, it had the idea of what? Reconciliation. Okay? Sabi um, Making amends. Okay? And as far as we are concerned in our Christian faith, uh, it has something to do with us being restored to God. Okay? Bakit? Kasi because of sin, ano nangyari? Nagkaroon ng ano? Um, separation between God, God and man. So when we talk about the doctrine of atonement, it's about the biblical teaching of being in harmony with God or being at one with God again through the substitutionary death of Jesus Christ on our behalf. Okay? Now, take note of that, of, of the word substitutionary. Okay? And about ibig sabihin ng substitutionary, the substitutionary death of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? What does that word mean? Is that, does that mean, yun ba yung ano yung, when you were in elementary, you were collecting this thing? Substitutionary. <laughs> and then when you were in high school, you were using it to write your brush. Yun ba yun? Yung medyo mabang mo, ano? Can you smell it? Ano nga yun? Ah, stationary pala yun. Hindi substitution natin. But, when you look at the word, it's from the word what? Substitute. Okay? Substitute. So when we talk about the substitutionary death of Jesus Christ, it means that He took, He experienced death on our behalf. He became a what? A substitute. Alright? For our sins. It means that He paid the price for our sins instead of us through His precious blood so that we can be reconciled with God. Okay? So he suffered the penalty of sin so that the effect of sin on us will be removed. And God will look at us once again okay, with righteousness, not because of our own righteousness, but because of the righteousness of Christ imputed upon us. One perfect example, a story in the Old Testament that points to this. If you remember in our training uh, with Pastor Ariel, one of the stories of, uh, in the Old Testament is the story of Abraham, right? When Abraham was asked by God to offer his only son Isaac as a sacrifice, right? Remember, God promised to Abraham, I will make you a father of many nations. And yet he only had one son. And then God now is asking him, Give me your son. But according to the scriptures, Abraham obeyed. Early in the morning, they woke up and they went. Uh, and uh, when they came to, to that, uh, that the mountain um, and prepared everything, when he was about to uh, strike Isaac, his son, the angel of the Lord said, Stop. What are you doing? Then the angel of the Lord said, Now I know that uh, you uh, that you have obeyed that you love me and you, you have obeyed God. So instead of and then according to the story, he suddenly saw Abraham when he looked up. He saw a what? A ram. When he saw a ram, he took that ram and offered that to the Lord. 
And he called that place what? Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. So the ram became a what? Substitute, offering, instead of his son Isaac. And that story is a picture of what Jesus Christ has done on the cross of Calvary for your sins and my sins. He became our substitute. He took upon himself the penalty of sin so that we can be forgiven of our, our sins. Jesus Christ's substitutionary death became an atonement for our sins as he took upon himself our sins and we were reconciled. God. Look at Hebrews chapter 9, verses 27 to 28. Hebrews chapter 9, verses 27 to 28. Now, if you look, read the book of Hebrews chapter 9 and chapter 10, it's a very good, uh, these are very good chapters. And we'll look at some verses also later on in this chapter. But look at chapter 9, Hebrews chapter 9. Verse 27 and 28. As it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment, so Christ was offered once to what? To bear the sins of men. So the word of God says that Jesus Christ bore our sins upon himself. He became the perfect sacrifice who was offered so that our sins can be forgiven and we can be reconciled and God can reconcile us unto, unto himself. So simply put, atonement is the act of God whereby he brings us into harmony or agreement once again with him through the sacrificial or the substitutionary death of his son, Jesus Christ. You get the idea of atonement? Yes? Amen. Really? If you did, let's have, you know, uh, this is what Ada, every time there's a training now in the Moving Beyond Lecture, if you if you get an idea or a lesson, you write it down in one page, in a, in a specific page, my, my great ideas. You know? So before we proceed to the next point, I want you to write in your own words the meaning of atonement. So let me give you about a minute. In your own words, what does atonement mean? Ano bang ibig sabihin ng atonement? You might use the words that I mentioned, substitutionary death, okay, sacrificial death. He bore our sins. Okay, all right. So those are some words that you can use. Heart be uh, recon reconciliation, reconciled, harmony, agreement. Right? What's that? Okay. Here's one simple definition I saw from John MacArthur. Okay. Sabi niya, atonement is the, ano yan sabi niya? The sacrifice of Christ by which he paid the penalty for sin. The sacrifice of Christ by which he paid the penalty of sin. Of course, the substitutionary death implied that because Christ was sinless. So, kaninong sin yung ginayari niya? Sa kanya ba? Right? So that's basically a, a, a brief definition of the word atonement. Now, the next thing that we look into is the demand for atonement. The question is this, why did Jesus Christ bear our sins? Why did Jesus Christ have to make atonement for you and for me? Well, there are two undeniable truths uh, really related to this that will, you know, that will answer this question. The first truth is that it has something to do with <clears throat> the holiness of God his righteousness and His justice. The absolute holiness of God, His righteousness and His justice. And the second is the absolute sinfulness of man. 
Sin, which is a violation or an offense to the holiness of God. Okay. Ano to? What is this all about? Well, basically it's this. Because God is holy, righteous, and just, okay, when sin entered into the world, what must He do? He must what? Punish sin. Because if He does not punish sin, what will happen? He will not be just. He must punish sin so that justice will be served. Why? Because He is a holy God, He is a righteous God, and He is a what? A just God. And what is the penalty of sin? According to the Bible, it's what? Death. Separation. Physical death, spiritual death, and eternal death. That's why at the moment Adam and Eve sin against God, because He is just, He executed what? Justice and gave the penalty for sin. But since also God is loving, gracious, and merciful, at that very moment as well, He provided a way, an escape, so that man can be saved from the penalty of sin through the promised Messiah, which was given as early as Genesis chapter 3, verse number 15, right? But in order for the Messiah to restore man to God and to uh, remove the penalty of sin, what must he do? He must give his life as a ransom. Okay? He needs to make atonement for the sins of man. Why? It's because this is what the justice of God demands. And God made it very clear that from the very beginning, in order for man's sin to be covered, a life must be sacrificed. San natin makikita yun? Well, Remember Adam and Eve, when they sinned against God, what happened to them? Their eyes were opened and they saw their what? Nakedness. So what did they do? They tried to make what? Uh, pants and polo and dress out of what? Fig leaves, right? But God said, no, 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 no. That's not... That's not enough. What did God do after God confronted them? He gave them a new outfit. Made out of what? Animal skin. To show to them that in order to cover your nakedness or your sinfulness, a life must be sacrificed. And that is shown especially in the institution of the sacrificial uh, system that God gave to the people of Israel, right? In order for the sins of Israel to be covered, what must they do? They must offer a sacrifice. A lamb, a goat, a dove, uh, a dove, a dove? Uh, it's a sin offering, right? It's a starting prayer meeting. Before they can even enter the presence of God, they must first offer an animal as a sacrifice for their sins. I remember what we always say during our prayer, but imagine if that is still God's requirement for us today. No hotel will accept us. Because we have to kill an animal before we can even come to worship God. Maybe I can proudly, Brother Jeff, we say, all right, as we prepare ourselves for worship, we spring out your lamb and your dove. And cut the throat. <laughs> Why? Because God established from the very beginning that without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness or there is no remission of sins. <clears throat> but the problem with the Old Testament sacrifices was, was that these sacrifices which were performed by the priests 
cannot really make them perfect or remove their sins according to Hebrews chapter 9. Because the blood of the animals only covered the sins of the people of Israel, but it never really removed their sins. Look at Hebrews chapter 10, verse 11. The author of the book of Hebrews writes, And every priest stands ministering daily and offering repeatedly the same sacrifices. Every day, repeatedly, the same sacrifices. Which one? Can never take away sins. It can never take away sins. It was never meant to take away sins. So why did God still ask them to do it? Well, God is using that to prepare them because these sacrifices point to what the Messiah will do when He will make a once and for all perfect sacrifice so that we, know we would no longer need to do the same sacrifices, the same rituals over and over again daily for our sins to be covered because Christ once he made that once and for all sacrifice, it does not just cover our sins, but it takes away our sins. Look at Hebrews chapter 9 now. Okay, I mean, Hebrews chapter 9 speaks about Christ being the great high priest, more, much better than the old covenant, okay, because of the new covenant through the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, uh, look at starting from verse 11. It says there, But Christ came as a high priest of the good things to come, with a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with the, His own blood, He entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. For if the blood of bulls and goats and ashes of a high first sprinkling of the unclean sanctifies for the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? And for this reason, he is the mediator of the new covenant by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant, that those who are called may receive the promise of eternal inheritance. And then when you jump to verse number 23, it says there, Therefore it was necessary that the copies of the things in the heaven should be purified with this, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifice than this. For Christ has not entered the holy places made with hands, which are copies of the true, but into heaven himself itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Take note of that first now. Underline that. Okay? Not that he should offer himself often as the high priest enters the most holy place every year with the blood of another. He then would have had to suffer often since, found, since the foundation of the world. But now, once at the end of ages, he has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And as, as we have read earlier, it's the point to man once to die, but after that the judgment. So Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. To those who eagerly wait for him, he will appear a second time, apart from sin, for salvation. So what the author is saying that when you go to the Old Testament and consider the tabernacle, which was made by the people of God, right? And when you enter the Holy of Holies, in other words, these things, sabi there, are what? Copies of the heavenly things. In other words, anong parang ano sinasabi ng Panginoon? Parang binibigyan lang sila ng idea kung ano talaga yung nangyayari. That there is such a place that is, when you're in the presence of God, you're in the Holy of Holies, where God's presence dwells, right? And, you know, the high priest would enter what? The Holy of Holies once a year. And he would do that every year, every year, every year. But according to, to the author of the book of Hebrews, since these are just symbols of the heavenly things, that's 
why there's a need for a great high priest who will enter not the copies, but the actual holy of holies, the actual presence of God, the actual holy presence of God, and there make that spotless, blameless sacrifice. And that's what Jesus Christ did, our great high priest. And the passage says that unlike the high priest of Israel who had to enter the Holy of Holies many times, once a year, Jesus Christ entered God's holy presence just once and made the sacrifice when He died on the cross of Calvary for your sins and my sins. Verse 26 says that He appeared to put away sin. Verse 28, but the sacrifice of Himself and he made that offering once. Only once. And that's where we can see the display ng power ng Panginoon sa atoning work ni Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ died on the cross, as a great high priest, he entered the holy presence of God and brought with him not the blood of animals, but his own precious blood. And God accepted Jesus' offering with the offering of his blood. The Bible says, He bore our sins so that he didn't make the offering for himself. Rather, he made the offering for us. I was trying to, I was trying to imagine this now. Um, probably, Remember when Jesus Christ died on the cross, his, what, were his, what were his last words? It is finished. It is finished. It is finished. Right? And then what? He gave his last uh, breath. And I would just probably, if you, you know, if you try to imagine, if you're watching a movie, you know, what happened beyond the physical? Probably when the Lord Jesus Christ made his last breath, he was taken up into the presence of God. The Holy of Holies. Right? And he said, Father, I'm bearing the sins of the world. And I'm coming to you to make atonement for their sins. Not with the blood of bulls and goats, but with my own precious blood. And I don't know, you know, what really happened, but I was trying to imagine it, you know, if it, if it was a movie, when God accepted Christ's substitutionary death, you know, you atonement for our sins, and there were probably explosions in the heavens, and apparently there was music, and then at that very moment, majestically, We experience God's power to salvation. God's power to, this, to salvation. And I believe that at that very moment in the spiritual realm, the spiritual realm witnessed the power of God. Nung namatay ang Panginoon, what the world sees what they saw, or what they can see, was a man hanging on the cross without life. But what the angels probably, the people in heaven, and even you know Satan and the and his demonic forces saw was God's power. I don't know. God's power displayed. Why? Because salvation was complete because of the atoning work of the Lord Jesus Christ. And marami pa siguro kung ano ano bagay na nangyari hindi natin alam. Pero uh, I was I was as I was thinking about it, I remembered that when Christ died, something spiritual also happened, which was recorded in the Bible. Many of Matthew chapter twenty-seven. That's why you, we, 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 we can't say that Christ's death was no ordinary death. Right? 
Bible. So I was in Matthew chapter 27, verses 15 to 53. What happened? Let's start from verse 50. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. So he died. What happened next? Then, behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth quaked, and the rocks were split, and the graves were opened. And many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised, and coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to men. Amen? So it only shows, although we don't know exactly everything that probably happened during that time, but it only shows that Jesus Christ's death was no ordinary death. It, is, it was a one-of-a-kind death because it's a death that made atonement. For our sins. It's the power of God unto salvation. Amen? Amen. Amen. Right? That's why when you think about Romans chapter 10, verse 13. Ano sabi sa Romans 10, verse 13? For God so. Ano sabi sa Romans 10, 13? And the first word. Ajan no, inatay nyo ano? Hindi nyo kami sado. For everyone, for anyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Alright? Paano malitignas ang isang tao? How can a person be saved? He must call on the name of the Lord. Right? Pero before a person can call on the name of the Lord, it must go through, he must go through the process, right? Anong process na dapat ito ni Apostle Paul? He must first what? Hear the gospel. Someone must preach to him first so that he can hear the gospel. When he hears the gospel, understands it, okay? He would what? Then believe, confess with his mouth that Jesus the Lord is Lord and believe it with his heart that God raised him from the dead. Romans chapter 10 verses 9 and 10. And then what will happen? He will call upon the name of the Lord and then he will be one. Saved. Right? So that's, that's the process of uh, salvation. But imagine, listen to this. The very moment that a person is saved, God's power is displayed. Why? Because According to Romans 16, the gospel is God's power to salvation. So when a person is saved, God exercises power so that that sinful person will be changed and will have the newness of life. Right? Therefore, that's why I said earlier, every believer is a what? Master. Of God's power to salvation. And when you think about it, no? when you reflect on the time when you were saved, when you and I were saved, the moment you and I called upon the name of the Lord and were saved, it's like a great shift happened suddenly in the spiritual realm. Imagine that. Try to imagine that. Why? Because at that very moment, from being a child of the devil, we became what? A child of God. Right? From being what? Condemned and uh, destined to hell? What happened? We became what? Citizens of what? Heaven. Ano ba? From you. Sabi ng 2 Corinthians 5, 7, 17, If any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. We were once dead, according to the Apostle Paul, spiritually, Ephesians chapter 2. But we were made alive, spiritually alive. Because of God's mercy and grace. All because of what? The atoning work through his sacrificial, to the sacrificial death on the cross of Jesus Christ. So what happened more than 2,000 years ago is still in effect today. When a person what? Believes in the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, imagine niyo, no? Kapag may isang 
kalau dia mau tumanggap sa Panginoon. Parang, we might not see it, but there's like a great, I don't know, probably it's like a great explosion happened in the spiritual realm that suddenly everything changed in the life of that person who believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. Imagine you. Grabe ang power ng Panginoon. Amen? Amen. Now, of course, there's so much to discuss about this and we don't have much enough time but praise God we have more Fridays no, to look into this ahead of us. But I would just like to emphasize today is that there's so much great things that happen that happen to us when we were saved. It's not just, I think, of course, there for us, now when we look back, I believe you would remember that there's that when you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and accepted the Lord, there's something that you cannot explain that happened to you, right? Yes. It's not just an emotional rush problem, hmm. but, but because probably um, in our spirits, God made us realize that something changed. He executed and displayed His power in our salvation. Things that are not physical. Although physically, may mga nagbago si Kula, di ba? That's why if anyone is in Christ, it's a new creation. Behold, all things are becoming new. There are changes that are happening in the life of the person. But the greatest change that happened in our life is not the physical, but it's spiritual. And there's so, there's a lot that the Bible tells us. And we will look into that later. I have justification sa diyan natin. Ano pa? May propitiation, reconciliation, may expiation, ano pa? Carnation. Ang dami pa yan, di ba? Grabe yung spiritual blessings. That's why Paul said in Ephesians, now we were blessed with every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen? Now as we close, although we can get many applications now, but I would just like to um, challenge you with these two verses. Number one, let's go back to Romans chapter 1 verse 16. Dapat yung isahin natin to, no? Isahin ka natin. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes for the Jew first and the gospel for the Greek. Don't be ashamed of the gospel. In other words, never take the gospel lightly. Never take the preaching of the gospel lightly. Every time you preach the gospel, every time you share the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, it's like you're unleashing the power of God. To salvation unto that person hearing the gospel. So that's why Paul said, "What? Do not be ashamed of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't hesitate to share it to your friends, to your loved ones, because when you do, parang you're denying them of experiencing God's power. Right? So again, Romans chapter one verse six. Another uh, verse that I would like to read to you this afternoon is Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2, verses 12 to 13. Therefore, my beloved, as we have also always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. So work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for His pleasure. So never take the gospel preaching lightly, never take the gospel lightly. And above all, never take your salvation lightly. Never take the salvation, the eternal life, the hope. Excuse me, the hope of eternal life, the, 
we have from, received from the Lord lightly. Why? Because God did not take it lightly. Hindi joke yun sa Panginoon. Why? He took the life, the sacrificial death of His Son so that our sins can be forgiven and we can be saved from the penalty of sin and be restored unto God. That's why Apostle Paul said, work out your salvation if you're true. What does that mean? Our salvation, God worked in us. Right? So what God did in us, what do we need to do? We need to work it out. In other words, what? Show to the world that God changed us. Show to the world that we are saved. Show to the world what? That we are a new creation. Work out our salvation. Ipakita natin that we have been truly saved by grace alone. Through faith alone. Faith alone. In Christ alone. I place my trust. And find my glory. Alright? So never take your salvation like that. May I challenge the brother Albert? I saw this video and I would like to share it to you. When I saw it, it was a great review on my part. And actually, um, coming here today was really hard for me. Alam niyo naman ako bantay bata ngayon. So, uh, I think I only had one hour of sleep. I worked, I, st I studied when the kids were sleeping. Then, uh, when I was about to sleep at 4.30 a.m., Karis woke up, so I had to put them to sleep once again. So, and then I woke up like 7, 7.30. I had to prepare meals for the kids. I had to give them shower, etc., etc. I prepare myself and do a lot of things. And then when we came here, what happened? Si Karis, ang kalat. So, so, para. Um, if I would focus on my situation, parang more, ang hirap naman. Mag-re-resign na But again, it reminded me that even yung siguro pa, what the hardships that I'm going through right now, probably if I can consider it hardship, is no match to the hardships that other Christians are experiencing just for them. To worship God and to serve God. And above all, it's no match compared to what Jesus Christ went through. He endured the cross, Sadi Hebrews chapter 12, despising the sheep. So if Christ endured, but the challenge is, are we? How, how are we running the race? How are we doing it? I said, you're kidding. How many of you have been in prison for your faith? Out of 22, 18 raised their hands. I thought, no way. I looked at them and I said, you, you 22 people, how many people do you oversee? Because they were all of these small group leaders, underground church leaders in the non-profits. I said, how many, if you count up all the people under your jurisdiction, how many would it be? They counted them up, and they said, a little over 20 million. I said, what? See, we forget there's 1.3 billion people in China. This is crazy. Well, I had 15 Bibles, and I passed them out. Obviously, seven didn't get them. And I said, let's turn to 2 Peter chapter 1, and we're going to read it. And just then, one lady handed hers to somebody next to her. And I thought, hmm, Interesting. Well, we turned there anyway, and as we started reading it, I understood why she gave it away. She had memorized the whole thing. She just recited the whole chapter. When it was done, 
I went over to her at a break and I said, you, you, you recited the whole chapter. She says, oh yes, I've memorized many chapters. I said, where did you memorize many chapters? She said, in prison. I said, you have much time in prison. So I said, but don't they confiscate the Bible? She said, yes. So people bring in scriptures written on pieces of paper and they bring it in. So I said, but then if they find that piece of paper on you, won't they confiscate that? She said, oh yes, that's why you memorize it as fast as you can. Because even though they can take the paper away, they can't take what's hidden in your heart. Wow. Well, after three days, you fall in love with these people. And when it was done, I said, how can I pray for you? I'm going to go back to America. You guys have been just so wonderful. How can I pray for you? They said, you know, Wayne, you guys can gather like this whenever you want to in America. We can. Could you pray that one day we'll be just like you? And I looked at them and I said, I will not do that. Big, incredulous eyes looked at me and they said, well, why? And I said, because you guys rode a train for 13 hours to get here. In my country, if you've got to drive more than an hour, people don't come. You sat on a wooden floor for three days. In my country, if people have to sit more than 40 minutes, they leave. You sat not only here for three days on a hard wooden floor, but you did it without air conditioning. In my country, if it's not padded pews and air conditioning, people don't often come back. In my country, we have an average of two Bibles per family. We don't read any of them. You hardly have any Bibles, and you memorize them from pieces of paper. I will not pray that we become like uh, you become like us, but I will pray that we become just like you.